All right. Now we're doing 8Q Wilson Primes. This one's by Huzafa. And everybody seems to hate this one because it's 58%. Uh, regardless, Wilson Prime satisfied the following condition. Let P represent prime a prime number. Okay, then P minus 1 factorial plus 1 uh, divided by uh, P squared should give a whole number, right? Your task is to create a function that returns true if the given number is a Wilson prime, okay? So basically, there's only there's only three Wilson primes that they've found so far. Uh, one of them's five, one of them's 13, and the other one's uh, uh, like 500 something or something. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. Uh, so let me show you. So when you plug five into here, it will be four factorial. So one times two, which is two times three, which is six times four, which would be 24, plus one equals five times five. Plus one divided by five times five equals uh, five, one, right? Uh, so that being said, uh, how do we get how do we get that right? So this one's probably the most complicated video I've done so far in eight Q, uh, and you need to know you need to deeply understand the, the some of the concepts here. So we're going to return, and the, the first concept we need to know is how to make a, an array out of this because uh, this is hard to explain. Uh, The first thing we need to take care of is making this here, right? The four, the four P minus one factorial plus one, which would be when you're using five, five minus one factorial plus one, which would be 24 plus one, 25, five times five, 25, right? Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, that's the easiest one we can do because the other one's 13, that would be a humongous number. We're not even going to bother with that. Uh, so first we need to make an array to house the 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, right? So we're going to start with array up from, and we're going to say, well, let, me, let me just read this. Uh, array up from, it's a static method that creates a new shallow copied array instance from an array-like or iterable object, right? So here's the syntax right here. Uh, first, you need to make an array-like thing, which uh, I'll show you how to do that first. So to make an array-like thing, we're going to say array dot from, right? And then the array-like thing is going to be like this, length, and the length of it is going to be p minus 1. Okay, so it's going to have, in the case of five, it's going to have four, uh, it's going to have four uh, indexes, right? Four elements. Four indexes for elements. You know what I'm saying. Zero, one, two, three, right? So next we need, also in this, we're going to need uh, this map function down here. Uh, and it's going to be this one here with the element and the index, and I'll show you why. Okay. So we're going to do comma, and we're going to do this map function, which will be, um, first let's show you what map is. So the map method creates a new array populated with the result of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array, right? So basically, here's the array.map, and here's the little uh, map function, which is x, uh, arrow function, x times 2, right? So 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8, 9 times 2 is 18, 16 times 2 is 32, right? So we're going to make this map over here because we need to make a map, fun a map function element with an element and an index. And let me show you about the syntaxes with, with map. It <laughs> is going to be element and then index, right? So we don't need to even worry about the element because we don't have the element, uh, the element isn't a constant. So, but what we do need to worry about is this index right here. That being said, since we don't care about the element, we're just going to put a blank space right there. And then after that, we're going to say index, all right? So now we do our little arrow function. And 
what are we going? Oh yeah, we're we're doing the. Uh, what are we doing? Since we're going to increment uh, further up in the like, what am I trying to say? We're trying to go like one, two, three, four. We're trying to have it increments. I don't know how to explain that. I don't know the words for that. Anyway, so we're going to do index plus plus. Anyway, so that should work. If not, I know where the problem is. Uh, so there we go. So now we've got an array that looks like this. It's going to be uh, whatever whatever p is. It's going to be p net minus one. And then on the element one, it's going to be one, two, three. And it's just going to increment by one. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, so now we're going to do a dot reduce because we now we need to make it sure it's uh, multiplied one times two times three times four. All right, so now we're going to do a dot reduce. And here's what reduce is. Reduce method executes a user supplied reducer callback function on each element of the array in order passing it in the return value from the calculation on the preceding element. The final result of running the reducer across all elements of the array is a single value. So basically it just, you know, it just sums up uh, uh, the elements of the array. The first time that the callback is run, there is no return value of the previous calculation. If supplied, an initial value may be used in its place. Otherwise, the array element at index 0 is used as the initial value, and iteration starts from the next element, all right? So index 1 instead of index 0. And per perhaps the easiest to understand case for reduce is to return the sum of all elements in an array, right? So here's reduce, previous value plus current value, so 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and now that's going to equal 10, right? So, boom, just like that normal normal style. So, what we're going to do over here with the reduce is we're going to say, let's go over here to the syntax. We're going to do previous value t times current, excuse me, previous value and current value over here. So, prev cur, and, ooh, let me wrap these up in a, have cur right there and we're going to say arrow function prev times cur right and here we go reduce and we're also going to have an, an initial value from for that so because the initial value if we don't put it in would be whatever is that's index zero and since we don't even have anything whatever would be at index zero would be zero so we're going to make it one all right put a space in there all right so now we've got this part taken care of right oh except for this part right here now we have to add one right so now we have this part taken care of now we have to divide it by the square of p so we're going to have to divide all this by p, excuse me, p times p, right? So now we have all this taken care of, the whole thing. Now that's the whole equation or whatever, formula. But now we need to make sure that the given number is a whole number, right? So how do we do that? We say modulus one, because we're gonna say this divided by one and it cannot have any remainder, so zero. Well, let's see what happens. Didn't work. Let's see. Then, there we go. So you can't do plus plus, you gotta do plus one. All right, and attempt it, and there we go. All right, I like this one. It was it was a real head scratcher. Like if you see, most of these are gonna say like five thirteen, uh, five sixty three, and blah blah blah, and it's just a bunch of cheater stuff. But I think that this, for what we're going for, is a one liner. I think that's pretty good. So best practice on that. 
I'm saying I very like it, and we'll see you next time.